Okay, in talking about harvesting 18650 batteries, um, something that I've not seen covered myself, uh, and just trying to self-educate myself about these batteries and things that you can do with them. Um, you know, disassembling a laptop battery pack, they have the band nickel strip uh, across each end of the battery, and... Uh, uh, thought I was going to rebuild some battery packs recently because, um, you know, I could buy the cells fairly cheap compared to the cost of the pack. And what I learned through that process is that the, uh, the interface chip BMS, as you will, on the laptop battery pack is got safeties built into it. So if it reaches zero voltage, it will not operate again. So... Uh, I actually found, after disassembling several laptop battery packs, that the cells were in good condition and the uh, BMS systems is what had failed on them or was failing on them, causing the laptop to die so quickly uh, because the cells would actually charge and hold charge once removed from those battery packs. Um, so, uh, you know, we're dealing with the, the flat top 18650s and uh, what I'm taking and doing with them and a couple things that I'm going to share that I just, you know, uh, observing as I'm new to these. Uh, to take a harvested cell uh, such as this one, uh, you know, it's got this little flimsy thin paper surround up here. It's got a very thin sheath. Um, you know, it goes in a laptop battery pack. It's not designed to be uh, handled often. So, you know, it's a very thin uh, outer coating there, uh, easily scratched. So what I have found, uh, and so far my primary use is these little flashlights that take the three AAA batteries um, in a carrier such as this. Um, the 18650 just far outperforms in brightness, longevity, uh, and less weight. So um, anyway, uh, I had started by just taking the Batteries with the, uh, you know, roughly clipping the tabs off of each end and, you know, calling that good enough. And then after doing some watching and some learning, and, um, actually um, going through after I had attempted to rebuild the battery pack myself and finding out that the new sales cells would not output any voltage because the BMS had been disconnected from all power during the surgery process of that. That <coughs> some of my brand new cells I purchased, um, you know, I was doing like other people and just physically pulling the tabs loose from the battery, which <coughs> on the top side is not that big a deal um, because that's basically just a, um, a pretty respectably uh, thick section of metal there on top that you're tech welding to uh, with my little uh, um, handheld tech welder. But here's what I discovered that when forcibly removing the nickel strip from the bottom of these brand new cells, uh, you can see there I've actually got chemical that is seeping through pinholes in the bottom of the battery. So this battery is likely headed for critical failure. So of course I've pulled it out of rotation, but in learning with that, um, I have opted to just, um, do a better job of trimming the nickel tab 
um, that remains on the battery after it's been removed from the battery pack. So on the bottom, um, you know, as long as I'm not far enough over to get into the wrap that was previously on the cell, uh, I call about good enough because with my use case, it's not like the corner of the metal is going to reach and touch anything and cause any arcing, anything like that. Um, but I found that uh, if I'm going to leave the tab section on the top of the battery, just to keep from stressing the structural integrity of the case of the battery, I've got to do a much better job than what I've done here. Um, so now my batteries trim up and look more like that. Uh, and again, I don't think the top's as critical, but I'm not going to be forcibly pulling the strips off the bottom of the cells anymore because of what I've seen with that other brand new cell. Uh, and it, you know, starting to seep chemical through the pinholes. Uh, buying these thicker self-adhesive um, rings and I'm just, I'm not even bothered on pulling the old one off. I'm just going over top of the one that was there if this will focus. Come on thing. There it goes. Um, but I've still got to take and trim that out. Um, and then the heat shrink sleeve to just over sleeve. I'm not cutting the old sleeve off. I'm just thickening the protection because again in my use case is flashlight. So it's not a high tolerance fit. Um, what I'm taking and doing is I take and I've already put the extra ring on the top and I'm not going at it with a metal spudger or anything. I'm using a uh, wooden skewer with a point and I go and work out and pry out the points of that tab because that tab on this on the nose of this could actually get pushed down in there, break through that little paper rim uh, that was on there previously and arc and cause a catastrophic failure. Uh, so I'm going to pry those out and trim this back to the uh, the tack weld points that's on top of the the we call it the button area even though it's a flat top so that there's no way this can get mashed down in there. Um, now also what you want to be careful of is when you're using your um, what are these called micro flush cutters um, you know when you're cutting you don't want to get over and cut through and make contact you know crossing and, and arcing but also as you're cutting you want to be careful not to do a double cut and leave a thin sliver in here you know it can be almost hard to see with the naked eye but a little sliver in here that could then later get punched down punched through the paper and cause a contact that you know even though it would likely burn itself out quick uh, you don't want anything arcing here um, so I'm going to take my dowel pry the excess up, trim it off cleanly uh, with my flush cutter, then with the extra ring on, I'm going to get it down in the sleeve, make sure I have no debris in my sleeve, heat shrink that down with a heat gun, and then my end result, um, instead of just having the raw harvested cell is going to be the much more wrapped, much more cleaner, um, come on, focus, focus, there, you know, uh, I feel much more confident in the serviceability of this battery, um, since the, the care has been taken after harvest. Um, oh, and the, the sleeves come in little packs like this, can be found at many online retailers. Uh, also taking care that after I've clipped some of the strip off to take the skewer to, because there'll be a little bit of magnetism and 
and knock the slivers off into something that I can go to the bin with later. Uh, so that, you know, the little slivers don't fall down in anything that I've got going on here, anything that could contact anything that could arc. But I have seen no one talking about where they have forcibly removed the nickel strip and then you have chemical ooze out of the base of the cell and these cells are brand new. I, I did the build, realized the build wasn't going to work and then immediately just pulled things apart and I wasn't rough on them but because it is seeping chemical there uh, even on that middle one there's that one spot that's just tiny but it's starting to happen uh, I just I can't trust these any longer and I'm going to have to dispose of them properly so uh, hopefully this information has been helpful